Right now, welcome one and all, I'm Loz and this is Gunpa's Workshop. Sunday, an, a, another Sunday waffle and an update. So, what have I been doing this week? An awful lot, but actually finishing precious little. I'll in, do an insert showing you, I've been having a rearrangement of the garage to try and see how everything fits in. And as you can see, aside from this back wall, where I've had a bit of clear up, I've lost my walkabout space because I've bought too much. So the whole thing needs rearranging. I've moved my Schoberg test back at right angles to create a, a bit more of an inclusive studio area. I've got the space, I think, I'll work between this and the back bench, particularly as it's cleared up a bit. Uh, I've put up the portable MFT tabletop. You know the one with the a path guide pilot holes drilled, but the dog holes still not drilled three or four years on. I've put that back to that. What I've also done outside of the garage in the garden, I've done a tidy up. I borrowed next door's a lopper. And with his permission, I've cut back a bit of the trees from next door that overhang our raised beds with his permission. I've cut those back and then I've cut back to the row of willows at the back to actually be able to get down that back footpath around the beds and I discovered a wasp nest in the corner which needs to be sorted out. Run away grandpa, run away. So that's in the garden. We've noticed as well our ballerina trees are actually getting ready for harvest over back end of this month in October. A couple of them were ready the the gala red eaters and the big uh, granny smith's uh, uh, cooking apples so we picked a few of those that were actually coming off the stems easily in the workshop aside from moving everything around and then moving everything back again <laughs> i still haven't sorted the layout what i have done and i'll insert bits the 3 by 2 a mobile table with all my little bench top power tools on behind you you'll see the insert i've actually bought a set of hex head bolts of various sizes and i got some 3d inserts and what i've done i've drilled the top of the mobile bench with the 3d inserts to take the bolts so the more or less screwed down. I also bought some of those plastic desk inserts that you can put power cables through. I got a size that will fit both the four power cables and the 63 mm uh, dust extractor flexible tube to, to, and I've drilled two holes in the middle of the bench and the, the uh, cables go down through and there's a, a nice neat hole with a cap for the dust extraction when I get that set up. So that's done. Uh, like I said, lots of stuff not started and not finished. I'll show you the insert. I've cleared all the rubbish, rubbish off the back of the wall bench and I've rearranged the power tools in a way that I think I can I can use the the key driver is the eight and a half inch Hikoki sliding mitre saw that, that I've positioned just right so I can get six and eight foot lengths of timber in you know along that wall and it's positioned in such a position that it's the most convenient for chopping twelve inch to two foot lengths of timber off as it comes from being pure and wicks and I'm going to put a hutch behind it I've got the timber in the shed but I have started I've cut out the I don't know if you can see that I'll do an insert I've cut out some plywood and some planed all around to form a zero insert uh, yeah, table for the sliding mitre saw and that will be set up 
again with the threaded inserts and nailed knobs from the back so I can move it across so I can use both the 45 degree and the 90 degree uh, cuts as zero clearance for when I'm doing my little boxes. So I'll be finishing that off during the week and I'll show you at the next roundup. And the other thing I've done finally and it's all a set of bits myself the makings finely sized up of a single runner got the mitre bar got the front and back fences and I've got the finger protectors to go on so that'll be assembled this week with the single mitre bar so that I can again for cutting up a box parts up to the 12 inches I can do both the 90 degree cut and the 45 degree cut by moving the hole if there's a single bar with the blade in the middle at 90 degrees I can cut things to the length and then by moving the mitre bar over to its other slot on the table saw I can do the 45 degrees on the end. The axle is the table saw, it tilts left, so you see what I mean? The This end is where the 45 degree cut will go and I'm following the plans of Mike Kenny, more or less. That's, that's his box making sled. So there's that. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, the other thing. During the tidy up, I seem to have found some push sticks that I require. Is it me or are, are these things uh, like those wire coat hangers? If you leave them in wardrobes, they breed in the dark. I don't know what the heck I'm doing with them. Right, yeah. Going forward with the sleds. Those of you have seen my recent videos will remember I went on a two day course up in the, the lakes to make this nice little oak, oak box with the curved sides and the sliding insert top. Still loving that and the whole family does and then Last weekend, the weekend before, I went on a one day course at Leeds uh, with Jake and Gaz at their workshop and we did a one day box which is just a simple hidden insert in the, the top and that was very nice uh, and I'll do a, there's a slideshow for this in the pipeline and I'll show that during the week. It's interesting to see how these boxes are made. So I'm made up and I'm geared up to actually start doing projects now seriously. I've got the sleds more or less. I've got the timber. Uh, this box, its bottom is made up of oak veneer both sides MTF six and a half mil so I've ordered a sheet and that's come I went to a, a company on Tintinet that provides plain door round oak in various sizes and I ordered some 75 mil by 20 mil oak boards and so some strips of square walnut edging I ordered that on the 4th still not come uh, but looking back at the email after I ordered it he said 13 to 19 days delivery so I'm expecting the, the makings of four boxes to come in the next week and I can make a start in the meantime I'll be playing with cheap softwood to get my uh, 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 jigs and my procedures right so I shall be making well these are smashing I enjoyed them the proof in the pudding is actually 
making it myself unsupervised without training wheels. So no doubt the next few efforts you see will be worse until I get better. That's that. And as I say, yeah, I do get sidetracked. I've been to a woodyard, not a normal uh, building supplies woodyard that has a very limited selection of hardwoods, uh, especially as I saw this box, the idea of using off cut strips. <coughs> I'll make stripy boxes with contrasting woods to take on hold. I wanted to get some off cuts in different uh, wood types as much to be able to recognise the wood types as to make the boxes. So I went to the Haywood Woodyard, who are really nice people. It's a big yard. They do a lot of stuff, obviously, for, for, for groundworks, fencing, decking, but they also uh, saw the big trees themselves, uh, it, it, the wood mizes them into the planks and dry them out in kilns. But they also have a couple of uh, shipping containers after they've done the big stuff. They have shipping containers for planks and beams that they've salvaged and offcuts. So I went in there, I'll show you a bit, and uh, bagged myself a bit of a feeding frenzy. Uh, note to self in future, decide on the project and then buy the wood for the project. Don't go and buy the wood because you fancy it and then worry about what you're going to use it for. Anyway, I'll show you what I've got. Right, clear the decks. First up, nice piece of hazel. It's got a lovely honey coloured grain pattern and it's got that change of colour between the outside and the heartwood. So that'll be nice as a stripe across the top of a box. I should get a couple of box tops out of that. As I say, ash. Nice pale wood. I've got two boards in that size. Let's have a look. Yeah, 450 by 145. And the pieces are 25 mil each, so I've got two boards of that. Some of these look to be just sawn, you know, sawn surfaces and some have been planed, though it's not a final planing and obviously since they've been cut there is a little bit of bowing in the wood. So. I'm going to have fun looking to see what, what I can do regarding planing, jointing them and maybe re-sawing them to get, especially for the smaller boxes. So that's ash. I picked up black walnut. That's lovely. At the star is a couple of pieces of ordinary European oak but um, they are quarter sawn Look at the end the vertical stripes and that gives you the, the jewellery lays, lays on the surface Paduk nice red colour they did have purple heart but, but I mean two minds about Purple Heart. I, I don't know what people think about Purple Heart over here. Apparently it tends to change colour and lose the purple after you start working with it. So maybe that's for another time. Uh, black Cherry. That's going to last for some nice little boxes. What's the next one? Sweet Chestnut. That's the smaller boards there on the on 25 wide and oh again a 20 mil thick but not a lot of movement and these have an almost finished 
finish to them so they look as though they've been through a planer. Last but not least, Iroko. So I've got a nice selection of different hardwoods. As I say, when I found these at the end of the uh, 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 container, all taped up and labelled up in the, the different uh, sizes, I went mad with the colours. So now I've got to find the boxes suitable. Some of them when they're only 20 mil thick, especially if they've got a sword finish and they has been some movement. I'm going to be struggling, especially with my coordination and eyesight, to be able to sew to get board sewn in too. I might have to do a saw and then keep some thin veneers. What do you think? Eighth of an inch veneers, a quarter of an inch veneers, and a piece for the side of a box. PS2 resistors, because when I went on this course, even though the carpets on a lot of these style boxes were oak, there, there was a couple of lids that I saw with some nicely figured U. So, that's it. Nice weenie edges, and that finishes to a lovely honey colour with some really nice, interesting uh, grain swirls and details in. And I reckon I can get one two four lives out of that it's not worth there was a style of box on the two day course where you had a lid that had the had the wing edge at the front is forming a, a little lift so I might have to go back to learn that style but in the, the meantime I'm just going to maybe take one off the end and see about finishing that for one of my boxes. So that's it. Busy week, a lot to show but nothing much finished. I'm still struggling uh, with the order and layout. And that's it. So I, I thought I'd keep you up to date. I hope it's not been too long and I'll uh, see you next time. I'm off for my cup of Yorkshire tea. You crack on in your garages and I'll see you soon. You take care guys.